A policy on informed consent is required by the Joint Commission. A typical policy should be developed by the medical staff and the hospital governing board and should be consistent with the legal requirements for appropriate informed consent. Informed consent implies that the patient has been informed of the procedures or operation to be performed, of the risks involved, and of the possible consequences. By signing the consent form, the patient or the patient's representative indicates that they have been informed and consent to the procedure or treatment. Consent represents a shared decision-making between the patient and the physician, and there are specific requirements. The patient must offer consent voluntarily, and they must be adequately informed about the medical care being given. An informed consent is needed for all invasive procedures or procedures where there are significant risks. Informed consent must include the nature of the procedure, the purpose of the procedure, any possible risks associated with the procedure, the benefits and desired outcomes of the procedure, any alternative procedures that could be performed, and the risks and benefits of alternative procedures. The consent must be relayed to the patient in a language the patient can understand. All consent must be filed in the patient's medical records. If the informed consent is not filed with the medical record, it does not exist. All informed consent must have the following. A disclosure cause to explain the procedure, its risks and benefits, and possible alternatives to the procedure an anesthesia clause if surgery and general anesthesia is required for the procedure, a no guarantee clause for therapeutic procedures, meaning the treatment is not guaranteed to work, a tissue disposal clause if removal of tissue may be necessary, a patient understanding clause stating that the patient has received an explanation and understands that explanation, a signature clause where the patient or patient's representative signs the document, the patient may rescind consent at any time. A written consent may be rescinded verbally. This means that as long as the patient is conscious and competent, only that person has authority to consent to rescind a consent. Consent is invalid if the patient is intoxicated, under the influence of narcotics, delirious, or irrational. When given consent, it is illegal to use a child or relative of the patient as translators. Translators are legally recognized only if they are at the same skill level of the physician or are qualified medical translators, which are employed as a translator by the facility. For example, a receptionist cannot translate 
for a physician. Consent can be given by a consenting adult and a minor only under specific conditions. The rules are the person must possess substantial understanding of the procedure. The person must intentionally authorize a professional to do something. The person must be mentally and physically able to give consent. The person should not be in need of psychiatric care and the person can be obligated by a court order. This means that the person must be a competent adult, a legal guardian, or a representative of an incompetent adult or an emancipated minor. The age of an emancipated minor varies by state and can range from 14 to 18 years. An emancipated minor can also be someone generally regarded as underaged, but who is married, self-supporting, or living independently of other relatives, or serving in the military. A pregnant minor or a parent or legal guardian of a child can give consent for children but not for themselves. Someone suffering from a condition such as an STD or has a mental illness can give consent for treatment. A patient not in need of psychiatric care or an individual obligated by court order. Last but not least, we will explain the different types of consent. The authorization for treatment should not be confused with informed consent. When a patient enters a medical facility, they are typically required to sign a document authorizing treatment. The document will allow the physician to perform the basic diagnostic examination and tests to determine what is wrong. It covers routine hospital services and medical treatments. This document does not give the authorization to perform invasive procedures. There are different types of informed consent. Consent can be given in writing or verbally. If a patient's consent is written, it should include the name of the healthcare professional who discussed the proposed treatment with the patient, the name of the healthcare provider who will perform the procedure, and the date time, and location where the consent was signed. Written consent offers some tangible proof if other facts relative to the situation indicate the patient did not fully understand what affixing of his signature meant in relation to his medical care. Oral consent can be verbal. It is just as binding, but difficult to prove. In addition to the general consent, there is the expressed consent, which can be a nonverbal act, such as nodding of the head or holding out the arm when told an IV is needed. Expressed consent can also be oral or verbal, such as a simple yes if asked a question such as, is it okay for me to take your blood? Expressed consent 
could also be determined by silence, such as not objecting when a nurse starts looking for an appropriate vein. Expressed consent is also understood from the circumstances surrounding the procedure or treatment. For example, if the patient presents themselves for a relatively simple, non-invasive x-ray procedure. Implied consent assumes the provider is acting in the best interest of the patient and in a manner that is consistent with the standards of care. The implied consent is only used in an emergency situation where immediate action is needed to save the patient's life and the patient is unconscious and unable to make a decision. Although consent is implied, an authorization form must be signed in order to show that an attempt was made to contact the next of kin. The form should also be signed by two consultants from two different disciplines. A resident's signature is not acceptable. When contacting representatives for incapacitated patients, the order of contact should be as followed. Court appointed guardian, person with the power of attorney, the spouse, the adult child over the age of 18, the parents, and any adult siblings over the age of 18. Prior to taking the examination, please reread the module objectives to verify that you have no additional questions to review. We hope you will sign up for the remaining modules on patient care in radiology. Thank you for using medical professionals for your CE requirements. Thanks for watching. To purchase the full course and earn your CE credits, click on the link in the description or head on over to our website at www.medical-professionals.com. And while you're there, check out our All Access Pass, where you can get unlimited CE credits for your state and ARRT renewal for just $49.99. We also offer a host of free resources to make it easier than ever for radiologic technologists like you to achieve excellence. Check out our free radiology CE webinars, clinical reference guides, and free CE courses on our website today. Be more than just certified. Choose medical professionals.